it's the profession that's really killing it for a lot of people. And that's too bad. And I wonder if we can fix that. <sighs> it's tough. It's a tough world out there. And I'm not sure what to do anymore. Loser with a capital L. Let's all be friends and get along because there's room for all of us. I really feel like the arts would flourish in this country. And right now I don't think the arts are flourishing. I don't think they're flourishing because I think there's a ton of negativity in this business. And I think the only way to fix it is to talk about it and to constructively point out when people are not doing or saying healthy things. I really wish I could make that happen. And I try to in what I do. So I would love it if you'd follow me along and maybe together we can figure out the meaning of life. What do you say? Yeah, let's figure out the meaning of life. Okay. Hey there friends, it's Destiny. Welcome to my channel and welcome back. This is Destiny's Musings. I have kitty cats that just started making noise as soon as I pressed record. And I am a professional violinist and I talk about difficult things. For instance, depression and anxiety, mental health issues, chronic illness, I look totally normal, <laughs> maybe, but I actually struggle with these things and I think a lot of people do. And my hope is that by talking more about it, it will raise awareness and people will feel less alone because I think that's really the only thing that can save our society right now. Also, if you subscribe, which would mean a lot to me, YouTube will push this content out there so that more people searching on these types of topics will find it and that can only help. I have also started a Patreon account where it's a $5 monthly paid subscription that benefits my new nonprofit. So it goes directly towards helping youth musically. And I get a little more in depth on things over there. There are some things, you know, if I gave specific examples on YouTube, people start to know exactly who I'm talking about or think that I'm spreading negativity and that's not my intention at all. So I feel a little safer getting more into the really nitty gritty details right now over on Patreon because this is such a sensitive topic. And what I'm going to specifically get in today is how all those things I just mentioned really are, <laughs> the word trigger is used so much, but the music business is a total trigger for all of those things. And dare you step your foot into the world of saying what you think could be improved in this profession of ours, people immediately label you as all sorts of negative things, which isn't necessary. And I wonder if you feel that way. I wonder if you feel like there are a lot of things right in this profession and also wrong in this profession. And I'm sure these things are universal and apply to many other professions. The reason I got inspired to do a video is because I put out a post last night on Facebook asking what's right, what's wrong. And I got quite a few good responses, many of them messages. So I know that there is an ear out there for this, but people are just so afraid to talk about it. And well, since I talk about everything and apparently have no problem making a fool out of myself on camera, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. So in this particular video, I'm going to get into it just a little bit. And then if you want to see more, you can head on over to Patreon. That'll be a longer video with, <laughs> what do we say, uncensored. So basically I am really struggling with what I'm even doing with my life right now. I'm sad, I'm down, I'm depressed. It is not lost on me that around the globe, people are dying and being massacred and are just trying to survive day by day. And here in America, we have the luxury of bemoaning what our existence is. And to that end, I should probably just stop the video because this seems so minor compared to that. But I do think we have a real crisis in this country of, like I said, a mental health epidemic, people feeling lonely, suicide rates are up. There's just, there are so many tragic things going on. And I think the only way to collectively heal without sounding too preachy is to be open and talk about our vulnerabilities. So I'm going to do that, especially about music. I wonder if you feel this way, but I have been feeling that because of the bad feelings I've been having, do I love violin anymore? Maybe that's what's making me depressed. Maybe I shouldn't do it anymore. And I finally pinpointed it. I actually do love music, always have. It's the profession. 
that's really killing it for a lot of people. And that's too bad. And I wonder if we can fix that. I think the number one thing that is contributing to this, and gosh, I would so love to know if you agree, is jealousy and ego. Okay, that's two things. <laughs> jealousy and ego and the need to create an existence that shows other people how great we are at what we do. And I just, you know, that's, it's not healthy. Not everyone's perfect all of the time. And I know this seems obvious, but I've got to tell you, some of the things I see fellow musicians posting on social media or the ways they interact with one another or, you know, I'll do something really nice for somebody and then they don't. I don't think it used to be quite this bad. I mean, there's room for all of us and everyone deserves to make music and society loves music. The arts heal. And my intention is to not sit here and complain about all the things that I think are wrong with the music business, but to actually try to find solutions on how we can all coexist together a little more peacefully. Because it's making it really hard for me personally. I mean, I try so hard to be such a nice and supportive person of everyone around me. And it, it doesn't compute in my mind when other people aren't that way. And not just to me back, but I see their behaviors to other colleagues. And it's born out of competition. Some competition is healthy if it drives us to be better, but not if it drives us to be assholes to one another. And it's like, that takes on many forms. That takes on, what do you say, shameless boasting about yourself on social media, or you know, somebody sends you something wanting to promote something of theirs and you respond very graciously and say, wow, this is really great. I'd be happy to do this. And then you send them something back of yours and crickets. It's the reciprocity that I think is so important is sometimes just not there. And I think it's because egos and jealousy get in the way. And I'm not talking about reciprocity. Like you do something nice for me. I do something nice for you just to even the score. I'm talking about genuine kindness towards one another where we lift each other up and I was recently in a position where my colleagues around me, not all of them, but some of them fell towards the category of ego and jealousy. And it just results in people tearing one another down instead of lifting each other up. And given how sensitive artists and musicians are already, we don't, we don't need any of this. And I think if we all start to talk about the things that, what? I'm back, had a camera fail, had to get another SD card because I yammer so damn much. Francois jumped up on the table in the meantime. As I was saying, I think if we can all be a little bit more open and honest about the things in our business that are challenging, I think we could really grow things for the better and come up with a really supportive community. Now I must say there are people in my community who I absolutely love and are supportive and who totally fit this bill. And yes, I should really learn to ignore the people that aren't, but it's hard. I'm, you know, I'm very sensitive. <laughs> I'm working on it. <sighs> but I do have to say the negativity in this profession makes it really hard sometimes to want to keep going forward. And I try really hard to focus on the positivity, but dang, it can be tough. And I wonder if it's the same for you. I know for some of you it is since you Facebook messaged me, but I would love to hear from more of you because I think if we're all open about our issues that we struggle with, with jealousy, admiration, envy, all of it, I don't know. I just, in my head, I think that that can really help, right? It has to help. So in this short YouTube video, <laughs> what's the point? The point is I am on this journey right now trying to figure out if I can still survive in this business we call music. I love violin and I will always want to play, but the profession itself presents unique challenges and that's just where I'm at. It's kind of hard to admit that. Admitting it makes me feel like I'm failing, like I should just suck it up and get over it. And because I'm even admitting it, the therefore I'm already out. <laughs> Loser with a capital L. That's what it feels like. Again, do any of you feel that way? Yeah, it's tough. This is where I come up with a really great conclusion to end this video and tell you to go catch more of my yammering about it over on Patreon. But my conclusion is, is this, it's just that it's hard and 
yes, focusing on the positive is the most important thing one can do. But like I said, I'm on this journey right now and making some big decisions and I would love it if you'd follow me along and maybe together we can figure out the meaning of life. What do you say? Yeah, let's figure out the meaning of life. Okay, one other important point, identity. My whole life when I was younger, I was obsessed with being the best violinist that I could be. I wanted to be the best because I had my whole identity You know, your background and how you grew up actually does affect you. And I came from a less than stellar background. I really only validated myself because I wasn't getting validation around me. My parents were both into drugs and alcohol and I don't know what my relatives were doing. The only way I found how to validate myself, my own self-worth was through playing violin. I'm so happy I discovered music. It became the outlet that saved me and I will be forever grateful. But I judged my whole identity on how I was doing and I wanted to be the best. And if things didn't go well, duh, I didn't feel good. And you know, I still struggle with that even though I'm obviously decades older now, it still lingers and I realize it's outdated and we all need to work on making our identity be other things than just one thing or even our career. But it's, it's hard when you start to admit that the ideals you have of yourself, the things that you've strived for your whole life might actually not be enough to make you happy. You have to do work to find other things. It's, I don't know. As my teenage students would say, it sucks. Uh, but it's good, it's called maturing and growing up. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that too on Patreon, because this is where we start getting really sensitive and I don't wanna like cry on the camera for YouTube just to get hits. So before I start boohooing here, go on over to Patreon and watch me there. <laughs> so. Oh, this is where I come up with a really great conclusion for this video. Come along with me on this journey and help me find the meaning of life. That's my goal. Can we figure it out together? Please, can we? Thank you. What do you think, Francois? You think so? Okay. That's all for now, but uh, as you know, I've been posting more regularly and I really want to hear from the artistic community what your struggles are, how envy, jealousy, all of those nasty things that we don't like talking about affect you and how you feel like people treat you affect you and your identity and all of that. And again, please subscribe and please head on over to Patreon. Patreon, I don't even know how to say it, where I talk more about it. And if you subscribe there, that $5 goes to Prairie Classical. Helps youth.